Shields up, Iron Breakers. Rurikan here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter Rise. And today we're going to be talking about buddies. When I started streaming Monster Hunter Rise here on the channel, I got asked a lot, Rurikan, which one is the best possible Palico? Which one is the best Palamute? What setup should I use? Should I play two Palamutes? Should I play two Palicos? Which one is the best option? And quite frankly, there is no right answer to that as far as I'm concerned, okay? You're all asking the same thing. But to each and every one of you, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a different answer. Like, this is the same thing as you asking me, Rurikan, which one is the best weapon in Monster Hunter Rise? Although that one has an objectively factual correct response, which is the gun lance. And if you answer anything other than the gun lance, then you're wrong. Because other weapons don't have blast dash. Like, I'm sorry. Sorry if you play another weapon. You don't get to have blast dash. Sucks to be you. But anyway, when it comes to choosing um, buddies and palicos... It's all about your personal playstyle. Like, what are you looking for in a Palico? And that is going to dictate, uh, you know, what you're going to get and whether or not you should have a Palamute. That is another thing. In my opinion, if you're just starting out the game, like if you start today, before you actually explore out all the maps, I think Palamute is really, really good. I think you should definitely play the combination of Palico and Palamute while you are learning the maps, while you are exploring the maps. After you are done exploring the maps and, you know, supplying the materials to build all of the camps and all of the maps, and you have all of the camps um, in all of the maps so that you can kind of like warp between the different camps. At that point, I actually think that you're better off playing with two Palicos. But that's my choice, okay? That doesn't have to be your choice. If you, if you really enjoy playing with the Palamute, you should play with the Palamute because at the end of the day, min-maxing your buddies is something that is not going to have a big impact on your hunts. Which is why, personally, I tend to min-max them according to things that I find fun. But before we get started on how I choose Palicos and Palamutes, let's talk a little bit about how to even get Palicos and Palamutes, right? So obviously, you go to the Buddy Plaza and you talk to Buddy Scout Yori, he is the one that is going to scout out buddies for you. How does scouting work? Well, pretty much like anything in Monster Hunter, you select an option and then you go do a quest. And then when you return from that quest, that option will be reflected. So what does that mean? Right now, if I go to the hiring menu, he's going to be showing me all types of Bombardier Palicos. Why? Because right now I'm scouting for Bombardier Palicos specifically. So if I go to the scout menu, we go to the buddy, uh, the buddy scout, we go to Palicos and we select change criteria. You can see that you can change just about anything in the Palico. You can completely customize a Palico to look any way that you want. Any lonely scout Palicos that look like that. I leave it in random because at least it keeps things interesting. It just like gives me random Palicos every time. But I do specify the support type that I want. Now there's one, two, three, four, five different support type Palicos that you can get. And each of them is fairly self-explanatory. Like you can see, there's the healer. What do you think this Palico is going to do? He's going to do healing spells for you. Spells. Healing abilities for you. There's an assist type Palico. What does he do? His specialty is putting down traps. That's his thing. Putting down traps or otherwise limiting the monster's movement. Because he has a really, really cool ability. You guys will see. Because I, I play with a, an assist Palico. Then you have the fight, fight Palico. And the fight Palico, what does he do? He, got, he has a buff that he can do to kind of buff your damage and buff your, um, also give you earplugs and stuff like that. So that's kind of his thing. But the Fighter Palico, one of his skills is actually like to deal damage. So I don't think the Fighter Palico is that great, but he can buff you. So if you're looking to just straight up deal more damage, get buffs, get potentially earplugs every now and then, you definitely want to get yourself a Fighter Palico. Bombardier, what does he do? Exactly what it says on the tin. He throws bombs at monsters. He bombs monsters into into a, into, into smithereens, basically. And obviously, as you can imagine, this is my favorite type of Palico, because I love explosions. And then you have the Gathering Palico, which in my opinion, it's a little bit broken right now. Broken in the sense that it is too useful and too powerful when compared to the other one. So if you were to ask most people which one is the best Palico type, most people will probably say Gathering. And I'll explain why, because I do have a Gathering Palico. But uh, yeah, Gathering is a very powerful Palico support type. So if you just like, if you're confused and you're like, I don't know which one I'm getting, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. The Gathering Palico is a very, very solid choice. 
Having said that, I'm currently cycling out of gather Gathering Palico because I got bored of it. And I'll, I'll explain to you guys why. But anyway, after you select your support type, like I have selected Bombardier right now, you make sure that you confirm. And then every time that you come back here uh, after a quest, he's going to refresh the list. So right now, you see all of these Palicos here, each of them with their own... Um, moves that they're going to be having and their own passive skills that they can have as you can see there because you can have moves and passive skills these are the two combinations that you get and all of these are completely random all of these are completely random so there's a lot of um there's a lot of cycling through different palicos if you want to get the exact perfect one and as far as I'm concerned, on a kind of RNG, I'm never going to get the perfect Palicos that I want. It always seems like they're either missing something, either they don't have all of the skills that I want, or they don't have all of the uh, passive skills that I want. It's, it's always a bit of a struggle with me, and those of you that watched my live stream, you might remember I was always trying to get like a Fighter Palico with Summon Endemic Life, which is that ability right there that you see, because that's an ability that I really like, and I... It never, it almost never happened. And when it did happen that I had a, a fighter palico with endemic life, you would have terrible passives, which is actually not the case here. These passives are pretty damn good. You got attack up L, critical up L. These are actually really good. But uh, yeah, that those were not the skills that I'm looking for in a bombardier palico. And palamutes is kind of like the same thing. Uh, the difference is uh, palamutes don't really have um, moves. Instead, you get to choose their gear slots, so you don't really have to worry too much about their moves, so it's easier to get a good Palamute than it is to get a good Palico. Because Palamutes, all you have to worry about is the passive skills. That's the only thing that really matters. And now you guys are asking, okay, so what passive skills do you tend to go for, Rurikan? And this is my personal choice. A lot of people usually tend to say, oh, you should go uh, status attack up, which is that ability right there with the, the three cost three things. You should go status attack up. I disagree. I actually don't like status attack up. Currently, this is version 1.1.2 of the game. I want to make sure that I always say currently because these things can change in the future. I'm not a big fan of status attack up because I was running two uh, pets, both with status attack up. I tried it with paralysis, with the maximum paralysis that you could get on a palico and on a palamute. And I tried it with sleep. And they never, ever ever got a status proc off on the monster so it's like unless you yourself are running the same status proc status attack up is not something that i personally would prioritize as a matter of fact status damage is something that i personally don't prioritize when it comes to palicos i realize that that is something that you would want to have in monster Hunter world i mean i did it all the time with sleep on my palico but for rise they either nerf them or in the current version, it's not working properly. I don't know. I very rarely, if ever, get a status proc. I don't remember ever seeing a status proc from an actual attack from my uh, Palicos or Palamutes. But that's my experience. Feel free to disagree with me in the comment section. That's completely up to you. But anyways, considering that I don't go for status attack up, what do I go for? Well, I go for uh, critical up and attack up if I can. Or critical up and range the attack up. That's also good. But one skill that I always want to have is Knockout King. Knockout King, I have seen Palicos and Palamutes every now and then KO a monster. Which I find interesting considering that, you know, you can't... I, I would very rarely see, if, if any... I don't, I don't actually remember ever seeing them status proc on a monster. But I have seen them KO a monster. So it's like... <laughs> Knockout King costs you one point, uh, which we actually don't have one here. Uh, let me see if I can find a pal. Well, it doesn't, doesn't matter, because you guys get the idea of how to scout for Palicos and Palamutes. I can just show you the ones that I'm using. So, Knockout King costs you one point, and it is a much easier way of, um, of basically getting a little bit of control in the monster. So, I, I personally go for Knockout King... Critical up L, and then some kind of offensive skill that I can get. Either attack up L or range, uh, range attack up. So right now, the two Palicos that I'm running, I have my main Palico, because I run two Palicos, I no longer run Palamute, like I said, after you explore all the maps. I don't think you need the Palamute to get around, because you can just warp through the different camps, no longer really a problem. 
But the two Palicos that I'm using is I'm using Kayamba <laughs> and Cha-Cha. Now that's a reference for people that uh, played Monster Hunter Tri or 3 Ultimate. You guys will know about Kayamba and Cha-Cha. But, um, and Kayamba is an assist type Palico, so he's the one laying traps down and stuff like that. Now the skills that I go for in my assist Palico is uh obviously silk mind is guaranteed like the the first and last move of every palico is set in stone depending on its types so, like the assist types always get poison prison as their last skill and feline silk mind as their first skill now what does feline silk mind do your cat fires off an harpoon that kind of restricts the monster's movements and prevents him from running away so it's a little bit of cc it's not like hard cc the monster can still move and attack you but he's a little bit more limited in his moves and he can't jump away as far as he usually does. He's kind of like a little bit stuck in place. So it helps you with uh, CCing the monster, helps you get better openings, stuff like that. And it's a really cool skill. I like I like seeing him use it. If anything, I just like seeing him using it. I think it's funny as hell. Then we got Zap Blast Spinner. Now I believe that the boomerang might potentially be better than Zap Blast Spinner, but I like the animation on Zap Blast Spinner better. So I go for that. I like explosions, what can I say? Summon Endemic Life. This is something that I value above almost every other skill because I use a lot of wire bugs when I'm playing. Like, I'm constantly spamming wire bug abilities. I love the wire bugs. So, having an additional one placed on the field at any given time is something that I value a lot. This is a skill that I always want to have in my main uh, support dude that's always with me. He needs to have Summon Endemic Life. Shock Prison. Pretty much self-explanatory. This is a shock trap. Your palico just places down a shock trap. And poison prison, your palico just places down a pitfall trap that also poisons monsters when they fall on it. And these two are friggin' awesome. So many openings that you get when it's just like, oh, here's a random trap. Boop. Done. Monster gets paralyzed. You go in there, you beat the crap out of it. Now, naturally, this is not going to be as valuable if you are fighting something like an elder dragon. Right, because Elder Dragons are not going to be affected by traps. So these two abilities just kind of go right out the window. They're no longer as useful. So for Elder Dragons, you probably are looking at using a different Palico. Like either a Fighter Palico for earplugs and buffs, or uh, a Bombardier Palico, or something like that. I've still been using just Kayamba through everything, because I just like him, and I like the semi life. It still helps. And I haven't noticed him actually using the, the traps during Elder Dragons. I don't know if they're smart enough not to do that. But either way, this is my main Palico. And then the skills that he's got is, like I said, Critical Up L, Attack Up L, and Knockout King. Now, an important thing is that right now, we only have five skill memory, but they're capped at level 35. I believe that this cap is getting removed. I don't know if it's on 2.0 or 3.0, but this cap will get removed, and your Palicos will level more. So I think it's conceivable that they could be getting additional skill memory for additional skills. So just keep in mind that something that you scout that is ideal now, that maybe has Critical Appel, Attack Appel, and Knockout King, it might not be ideal later because you might need more offensive skills, right? That's why this one is actually really good because it's already got ranged attack up, the stack on top of Attack Appel, or even like Attack Up S, the stack on top of there. So, this one is a really, really good Palico, in my opinion. This is this is as close as it gets to a perfect Palico for me. An assist Palico that gives me a lot of control over the fights that I'm fighting, at the same time supports me with semi-endemic life, and he still has Silk Mind. Like, very, very, very useful Palico. This is my main dude, Kayamba. And then you have Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha is a bombardier. Why am I playing with uh, a Bombardier type pal Palico instead of playing with a Gathering Palico, which is m what most people are doing? Well, I actually started working on this Bombardier Palico when I decided that I was going to make this video because I decided I don't actually want to play Gathering Palico because that's kind of boring. Like, everybody's playing Gathering Palicos because they're super powerful and we'll talk about why. And so I was like, I just want a cat that make puts the most explosions possible on screen at any given time. And that's what Cha-Cha does right here. He's got Feline Wyvern Blast, which works pretty much like Wyvern Blast in Monster Hunter World. Like you play something in a monster, every time you hit it, it explodes, deals damage. It doesn't count for like the multiple individual hits of the Gun Lance, which kind of sucks. But then again, Gun Lances would be overpowered and you would be forced to use Feline Wyvern Blast. Uh, but yeah, Wyvern Blast, really cool skill. You got the Zap Blast Spinner again. Like I said, 
Uh, I think that the boomerang might be better, but I like watching the zap blast animation more than the boomerang, so whatever. You got anti-monster mine, which I actually don't think is the best choice here. You can get power drum instead of anti-monster mine. It's probably a better choice. Like I said, I just like explosions, and he puts down a monster mine. Monsters go into the mine. They blow up. Big explosion on screen. Makes him very happy. You got the flash bombay, which can bring monsters down. You can get shock trap in this slot as well. But I was like, no, we already have a trapper. Let the trapper do the traps. And this guy can pop flashes every now and then. And these palicos are actually pretty good about flashing monsters. As opposed to the palicos that you had in Generations Ultimate. They were not nearly as good at flashing monsters as these ones. And then you have the Giga Barrel Bombay, which comes default and just destroys everything. Big explosion, right? And then, when it came to the equipped skills, this is one of the reasons why I'm still scouting for more Bombardier Palicos, is because this one is right on the money in terms of, like, three skills that I want now, but he's not ready for the future. So once they eventually increase the uh, level of the Palicos and we potentially get more skill memory, I'm not going to have any more useful skills. So I have the Critical Appel, the Attack Appel, and the Knockout King. I can't even equip them all yet because I'm still leveling them up. But... I'm not going to be able to, once we get more skill slots, if we get more skill slots, he's not going to have any room to grow. So I'm still scouting to see if I can get a better version of this one, uh, but for now we're using this one. Now let's talk a little bit about Gathering Palicos and why so many people are using Gathering Palicos. Um, so the best one that I have is actually this one. This is probably my best Gathering Palico. He's got Endemic Life Barrage. What is that? That is a random skill that is just so friggin' powerful, it is insane. Like, this thing can sleep a monster. Like, he can shoot out a sleep toad at a monster. It's a really cool animation, too. He's got, like, a little ballista. He puts the toad in it, and it shoots from the ballista string to the monster. So, he can shoot paralysis at a monster. Monster gets in sleep paralysis, uh, paralyzed. He can shoot uh, sleep toad at a monster. Monster gets instantly sleeped. Uh, he can shoot a poison toad, he can shoot, like, a shock beetle thing, so that the monster gets, like, all blue and yellow, and if you hit him in the head, everything counts as KO. Um, gives him Thunder Blight, right? He can basically do all kinds of different things with the Endemic Life Barrage, and I really do think it's too powerful. <laughs> that thing is broken overpowered. Then he's got Zap Blast Spinner. Again, Boomerang might be better. He's got Power Drum, which gives you attack and defense up. And he's got a Shock Prison. And he has Pilfer. Pilfer basically steals additional materials for you. So your, your Palico, just like, you just get more materials for playing with this Palico. And this is one of the main reasons why a lot of people are running Gathering Palicos. They have one of the best skills in the game, which is Endemic Life Barrage for a Palico. Just like, forget about it. It's one of the best ones. And then they also steal additional materials for you. It's kind of like a no-brainer. And in terms of equipped skills, what I have for him is, again, you got the Knockout King, Critical Up S, uh, L, and you have Range Attack Up here. Uh, would be good to have Attack Up L as well on this one, but, you know, I couldn't get that because RNG is a bit of a pain. But, yeah, this is potentially, if you want to ask which one do you think is one of the most powerful Palico setups, this, this is probably pretty close to, to what you can get, uh, the Gathering one. But again, I would highly recommend people to choose Palicos based on what they like. Like, if you want to get healed, get a healer Palico. If you want to get buffs, get a fighter Palico. If you want to see explosions, get a bombardier Palico, because at the end of the day, min-maxing Palicos and Palamutes and whatnot, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Feel free to disagree with me. I'll tell you right now, most speedrunners even run without them. Why? You guys ask, well, why would they run without them? Because that way they have better control of the monster. Because the monster actually targeting different things other than you makes it harder for speedrunners to get good times. So to give you an idea, some of the people that do the fastest clears in the game, they're not even playing with Palicos or Palamutes. So don't think of this as like this big thing that you got to min-max into oblivion. Like, I'm min-maxing the fun of what I think is fun in a Palico. Like I said, I went out of my way to get a Bombardier Palico with skills that I don't even think are probably that great just because I like seeing them on screen. Like, I love seeing a Palico throw out a flash randomly or put a monster mine in the ground and seeing the monster step on the mine and big explosion comes on screen, right? I love that stuff. I also really like the, the little feline silk mine thing that the assist Palico does. I think that's really cool. Now, in terms of gear... 
I can tell you guys the gear that I'm using. I'm not sure that I would recommend this. I have min-maxed the gear a little bit to my personal taste, but uh, this is the gear that I have on both my palacos. You have the Rachnatome. Now, the Rachnatome has a decent amount of damage, both in melee and in range. You have 155 melee, 175 range. Uh, I actually prefer the palacos to stay at range more. I'm not sure if the AI will get them to stay at range more if you give them a ranged weapon, but I prefer them to stay at range because it's not like they're doing significant melee damage. So it's like, at least stay away and stay alive for as long as you can. That, to me, is good. And then on top of it, the Rachnatome also has 25% affinity. 25% affinity. That's a lot. Okay? And then we have the uh, Gosarag Mask. Why am I using Gosarag Mask? Because it offsets some of the um, negative defenses that you get that you get from the Puppeteer's Guard. Puppeteer's Guard has a lot of defense. It was something that was fairly easy for me to craft. So I was just like, okay, let's just do this. It's got a ton of defense. It's got reasonable um, resistances. The problem is that it has a hefty negative ice resistance. And this is, again, min-maxing to this level is not really something that you want to do. What you should do for your Palicos and Palamutes is just dress them up however you think is funniest. But in this case, I was like, let's really try to squeeze as much out of it as we could. And in my opinion, this is probably some of the best combos that you can have because you get the Puppeteer Garb that, you know, gives you some fire resistance and gives you negative ice resistance. Then you get the Gosarag Mask to kind of like compensate for the fact that your ice resistance is going down and it also has a lot of defense. So, you know, these two kind of nullify each other, gives you decent defense and you still stay with reasonable resistances, and you have a weapon with 25% uh, affinity. But yeah, those are my buddies, those are my Palicos. Let me know what Palico combinations you are using. Are you playing Palamute Palico? Are you playing Double Palico, Double Palamute? Why? Uh, I, don't, I haven't really talked too much about Palamutes because I just don't use Palamute anymore. So uh, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to, to comment there. I would still go for the same stuff, though, like Critical... Um, Knockout King. Oh yeah, and remember, the weapon that you equip on your Palicos, if you use Knockout King, has to be a blunt weapon. If it's not a blunt weapon, then Knockout King doesn't actually do anything, okay? Like, you gotta... It's it's almost like putting KO on a, on a like, on a sword... Not, not a sword and shield, but like, putting KO on a long sword. Although you can do that with Punishing Draw. I guess you can put KO on anything if you do Punishing Draw, but basically if you put Knockout King on a Palico, the weapon has to be blunt. If it's not blunt, it's not actually doing it. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong, stay safe, and tune in tomorrow because we have the, um, the big live stream happening with the reveal of all the things that are happening in 2.0. I'll see you guys then. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out.